Alright, welcome back to Midnight Med. This video is on skin cancers. So skin cancers develop due to damaged skin cells proliferating uncontrollably. Skin cells become damaged primarily due to exposure to UV radiation from sunlight and from other means like solariums and tanning beds. The main risk factors for skin damage would be things like age because you'll progressively accumulate more insults to the skin over time the older that you get. Skin type, so people with fairer skin are generally going to be more prone to developing skin cancer than those with darker skin. And occupation, so things where you're going to be in the sun a lot. So outdoor activities like sports coaching or working on in construction, things like that, you're generally going to be exposed to the sun a lot more and you're going to be more likely to be exposed to UV radiation and have uh, damage to your skin as a result of that. And other things, as I mentioned, like tanning beds and solariums, saunas, those sorts of things will increase your exposure to UV radiation as well, and therefore your skin is more likely to become damaged. So depending on the type of skin cell that's affected, the skin cancers will have different characteristics and potential for metastasis. But before we go into the actual cancerous lesions, I just want to discuss a couple of pre-malignant lesions. So the first one is actinic keratosis, and these are more commonly known as sunspots. They're crusty lesions on sun-exposed areas. Um, so the face, the arms, the legs, the scalp in someone who's bald. And these are pre-malignant and can develop into SCCs or squamous cell carcinomas over time. They're treated with 5-FU, so 5-fluorouracil, which is a chemo drug that's applied as a cream in the case of actinic keratosis. There's also another cream called imiquimod and also cryotherapy, which is burning it off with cold. The next lesion I want to talk about is keratoacanthoma, which is a small papule with a keratin plug in the middle. It's related to SCCs, so it's always treated. Again, 5-FU, methotrexate, surgical excision sometimes, and Mohs surgery, which is a type of micrographic surgery where they take little bits of the skin, little bit by little bit, generally done in more sensitive areas. And the last one I wanted to discuss was Bowen's disease, which technically is cancer. It's squamous cell carcinoma in situ, which is basically still at the level of the epidermis and hasn't invaded yet. Um, so this can be treated again with 5-FU and Miquimod, as well as photodynamic therapy. So squamous cell carcinoma. So these develop from sun-damaged keratinocytes and account for 30% of all non-melanoma skin cancers. They're usually ulcerated in the middle with an outer crust. So, so you can see in the picture on the left, there's an ulcerated region in the middle and some crust on the outside. <laughs> The difference between this and something like an actinic keratosis is that the actinic keratosis wouldn't have that ulcerated bit in the middle. Uh, these usually become invasive when the tumor suppressor gene p53 is mutated and these are quite common in transplant patients due to immunosuppression so the immunosuppressive drugs that they're given uh, to prevent stuff like graft versus host disease will also suppress the body's natural response to the cancer cells and therefore they're more likely to become invasive as a result of that. Surgical excision is the mainstay of management, and as I mentioned earlier with keratoacanthomas, uh, most surgery is used in sensitive areas to take a little bit by little bit out. So sensitive areas would be like the head and the neck area. The next major type of skin cancer is basal cell carcinoma. These develop from sun-damaged basal cells, which are like the stem cells of the skin, and these account for about 70% of non-melanoma skin cancers. They classically have a pearly nodular appearance, as you can see in the image on the left. They're slower growing than SCCs, so there's less malignant potential. They're less likely to invade. They can become invasive when patch 1 or P53 are mutated, and patch 1 mutations are seen in Gorlin syndrome. Surgical excision is the mainstay, as with SCC, and as I mentioned, most surgery could be done in sensitive areas. Same thing applies here. But with BCCs, we can also use cryotherapy, 5-FU cream, and a microd cream to deal with these. So the last major type of skin cancer, probably the most important to be aware of, is melanoma. And these develop from sun-damaged melanocytes, and they comprise up to 5% of cancers in some areas. So very, very serious. Uh, they're characterized by ABCDE, which is asymmetry, border, color, diameter, and evolution. And the measurement known as Breslow thickness is the key measurement that determines severity. So the larger the Breslow thickness, the more severe, the more likely the melanoma is to be invasive. There are four main types of melanoma, so superficial spreading, which is on the left, the first image, and that's the most common. And the second image below is nodular and does seem to be a little bit of superficial spreading underneath that as well. But nodular is a fast-growing melanoma, very serious. Lentigo maligna is often seen in older people. It is less serious than the first two types, and acral lentiginous is seen on the palms and soles. As I mentioned, there's high malignant potential, so very serious, important to take seriously. 
wide local excision is the key and the mainstay of management. And depending on how far the tumor is invaded, you might need a lymph node biopsy or a lymph node dissection in invasive cancers and potentially even need adjuvant chemotherapy. All of this is to say, not just for melanoma, but for all of the skin cancers and skin lesions I've mentioned, sun protection is very important. So sunscreen, hat, stay in the shade, don't expose yourself to sunlight too often, um, and make sure you look after yourself because these can become very serious and they're quite avoidable with the right care. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow us on Instagram at midnightmed1200 for more, and we'll see you in the next video.